I'm so stoked about this, guys. This is uh, such an important topic and something that I wish I would have had an hour to dive deep into, you know, years ago. But um, I'm going to be going back out to the health insurance marketplace myself here this year. So I'm anxiously awaiting to hear what we're going to learn today from Lexi and Jess from Catch. Uh, they are uh, the real experts here, and I can't can't wait for them to share. So. Um, I'll introduce them here momentarily, but again, feel free to add questions in the chat as we go. We'll call those forward and we'll answer them when we can. We'll have time at the end. We have a little bit of a presentation to share here, but thanks for being here, guys. Uh, I'll start with Lexi Gervis, who has been working with me to prepare this on behalf of Catch. Uh, Lexi, you want to say hello and talk a little bit about with, uh, your role with Catch? Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining. We're so excited to have you guys here. Uh, I lead policy and partner engagement for Catch. So I work with our partners like Jay to make sure the people that they work with know who we are and what we can do to help. And then this is Jess. Jess, if you want to intro yourself. Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jess Little. I'm the director of partnerships here at Catch. I'm also a licensed health insurance agent. So really excited to be here to talk all things health insurance and open enrollment with you guys today. Uh, super excited to get started. And I got to say, Catch catch went through Y Combinator, right? Yes. A few years ago. I remember seeing uh, just like the list of companies that went through Y Combinator because I was really interested in startups at the time. And I read the, the kind of short pitch about Catch and I was like, holy crap, it's actually happening. Mm -hmm. Somebody is actually tackling this pro uh, problem finally. Um, so great company, and I've, I've watched your guys' growth over the last few years. Um, it's, it's really phenomenal what you guys do. So I'll turn it over to you, Lexi, to, to get us started. Feel free to share your screen. And if you want to give uh, an even deeper introduction into Catch generally, feel free. Uh, Meredith, it is Catch with a C, C-A-T-C-H, which you'll see at the bottom of the screen. Uh, all right, Lexi, I'll give it over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jay. And is everyone seeing the presentation up? Just making sure. Okay, thanks, Jess. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna kind of briefly take us through uh, what it means to be an independent worker with respect to benefits, and then I'm gonna hand it over to Jess, and she's gonna dive deep on health insurance and open enrollment. And then, as Jay said, we're gonna leave time for questions at the end because with health insurance, there is often a lot of questions. Uh, great. So that's just to give you a sense of where we're going. I'll start here. So. We all know that with standard W-2 employment, your benefits are taken care of by your employer, right? So your employer gives you health insurance, a 401k plan, uh, paid time off, contributes to your unemployment, and all of that stuff really gives you a sense of safety and security. But unfortunately, probably you guys know, uh, this often ends up tying people to jobs that they might not want because they don't want to lose their benefits, right? So often workers become tied to their benefits in this context of traditional work. So if you decide to go out on your own, like most of you have, uh, and kind of leave behind this sense of safety and security, benefits then become one of your biggest pain points, right? So instead of having an HR rep that can handle all this for you, this really falls on your shoulders to figure out how to put together your benefit package. And that includes everything from paying quarterly estimated taxes, figuring out where to get health insurance, how you can still save and invest in retirement when you don't have an employer contributing. So big surprise, <laughs> that's where Catch come, comes in. <laughs> we can help, right? So Catch helps independents build a modern benefit package uh, with health insurance, retirement, tax withholding, savings, all in one easy to use app, of course. Um, I'm gonna give you a kind of a quick overview of how it works. So basically you pick your benefits and here Catch will give you personalized recommendations to help you figure out what benefits you need. And then you're gonna link your bank and actually tell us where you earn income. And that will enable you to set aside a percentage of each paycheck to put into your benefits. And this kind of withholding will help you start to build your safety net. And that's really it, it's that simple. So that's a kind of really brief overview of benefits, a lot of which you already knew, but kind of where catch comes into that. Um, and now we're gonna dive into health insurance, which is everyone's favorite topic. But we did wanna start with kind of some good news, right? Some quick facts about health insurance that actually are gonna make it sound uh, exciting for you. So first of all, if you are self-employed, 
your pre premiums are actually tax deductible. So that's something that a lot of independent workers don't know. Similarly, when you enroll in health insurance, you can also get dental and vision insurance. So you can get that at the same time. In terms of costs, nine out of 10 people actually qualify for tax credits to lower, lower their monthly costs. And this is particularly relevant this year with the American Rescue Plan that Biden passed. The tax subsidies were large and actually uh, resulted in, I think it was nine out of 10 people getting plans for $10 or less. The fact, the fact that I have there around 7 million, that's from actually last year, but this year we're seeing even greater tax subsidies. So health insurance is really affordable and uh, Jess is gonna dive into how it's possible to get it. Awesome, thank you, Lexi. Just to take a step back to, um, oh, perfect, thank you so much. As we uh, talk about open enrollment, I do wanna highlight the date specifically um, as open enrollment is right around the corner starting on Monday, November 1st. Uh, so many of you may know, open enrollment generally runs from November 1st through December 15th. This year it is being extended to January 15th. But keep in mind to get coverage starting January 1st, you will need to be enrolled in a plan by December 15th of this year. So just want to call out those dates as they are quickly approaching. Um, and tapping in and talking a little bit more about the plans that, you know, catch offers um, and, and what that looks like. So catch offers individual health insurance coverage, um, which is specific for, you know, people or families sold directly through the federal marketplace. So you guys may know this as healthcare.gov. Uh, you may be familiar. Um, as we talk about the plans and what's actually covered, it's important to note that these plans are essential health benefits that are actually covered here up on the screen. So as you look at the specific, um, you know, plans, they are covering, you know, ambulatory patient services, emergency services, hospitalization, maternity and newborn care, mental health and substance use disorder services, prescription drugs, rehabilitative, and you guys can of course read this as well, uh, laboratory, and we're happy to share this too, preventative and wellness services and pediatric services. So super critical for us to call this out because not all plans off exchange, so outside of the federal or state marketplaces, cover these essential health benefits. So that's important to call out. I think someone chatted in uh, specifically asking around state marketplaces and specifically around California. Catch does um, enable individuals to shop and apply and enroll uh, through um, California through our products. So you can, um, even though it's a state exchange, you can go through the California flow through the Catch product. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the next few slides. Real Perfect. quick, Jess, just uh, something that um, I wanted to clarify for folks in case they're wondering, if I'm thinking about, if I'm familiar with the healthcare.gov marketplace, um, is the, are the plans on catch the same plans or different? Like, am I making a one or the other decision if I go through catch? They are the exact same plans um, and what we're offering. It's the exact same price as what you will be seeing through healthcare.gov as well. We are serving up those tax subsidies. So you will know if you qualify for additional savings through our product. Um, the overall benefit you know, here is tapping into um, Catch's entire product, right? So you may be accessing additional benefits through Catch and we're able to certainly have that one-stop shop um, for you. So you're able to go through the whole flow rather than just just going to you know healthcare.gov and then maybe tapping into someone like catch just for tax withholding or anything like that. I will also say the healthcare.gov website as a user, this is my opinion just as a user, <laughs> uh, is not great. It's like a government website. So being able to parse through that information through an interface that was designed to be used by people <laughs> uh, is is very helpful. Yes, and uh, yes, certainly, and, and we make it easy, and it's a very uh, fast and seamless process of being able to just shop those plans, apply, and enroll, um, you know, less than 10 minutes or so. Awesome. So as we think about picking the right type of plan and overall just like network coverage, um, you guys have may, you know, have heard, you know, HMO, PPO, EPO, like what are all these different plan types and, and what does it actually mean? start to think about it. So um, whenever you think about needing care, you generally think about needing to actually choose a doctor, right? And thinking about in-network doctors versus out-of-network doctors, like what does that actually look like? Um, so depending on the health insurance plan that you choose, you may or may not require to, you know, choose doctors who are actually in-network versus um, out-of-network and overall how much you're, you know, oops, paying. Sorry, like, 
no problem. Um, so as we think about HMO plans, um, so the health maintenance organization plans, these plans give you access to certain doctors and hospitals within a specific network. Uh, so typically the care is only covered if you see a provider within that HMO you know, network. And generally these plans won't cover out of network care um, unless it's an emergency. As we look at PPO plans, um, PPO plans are the preferred provider organization plans. Um, this is typically um, still the most popular um, choice by the masses. Uh, typically PPO, you tend to have higher premiums um, than an HMO or a POS plan, um, but you can access specialists or out of network doctors without needing a referral. Um, so typically that's why you'll see folks tapping into the PPO plan. Again, um, the overall cost uh, you know, upfront may be a bit more, but you have more flexibility. EPO, similar to an HMO, um, so exclusive provider organization plan. Um, an EPO is managed care plan where services are covered only if your doctors or specialists or hospitals in that plan network um, you know, are, are essentially within that network. So you'll want to ensure that your doctors right, are, are covered there. Um, and the price typically um, you know, again, is similar to uh, real, real quick, Jess, um, I have a podcast, so I'm an audio nerd. Uh, because you're using your, your computer microphone, when you move your computer, we hear shuffling. So just try to <laughs> keep it really stationary. <laughs> You. Um, perfect. And then uh, as we look at the uh, you know, POS, so point of service plan, um, so it's basically a combination of you know, your HMO and PPO. Um, and then typically you're able to see you know, uh, providers within a larger network and, and choose your primary uh, care provider. Um, but you can also use you know, specialists within you know, the out of network, but again, it may you know, be higher uh, price point in, in that regards. And then the last point here, calling out high deductible health plans. Um, now, high deductible health plans um, you know, certainly can be in the form of an HMO, PPO, you know, EPO, or a POS. But we want to call those out because specifically, if you have a high deductible health plan, you may be interested in a health savings account where you can actually set aside funds tax-free that can go towards health expenses. So that's important to note specifically if if um, you know, there's interest there um, of certainly having that health savings account in addition to help pay for you know, additional expenses. If I'm looking at these five acronyms right now and I'm saying, gosh, I don't know which one that I need, how would you recommend I filter when I decide like what type of plan is for me in the process of enrollment? Certainly. So, and we'll walk through how that actually works with our product too in a few more slides. Um, but generally what you're, you know, looking at is typically for individuals, it's understanding how often you're going, you know, to the, to the doctors and what those needs may look like, um, especially for, you know, a PPO being the, you know, most expensive uh, from a monthly premium standpoint. Are you frequently visiting your doctor, needing to go to specialists? Are you traveling for work a lot and may need to, you know, go to, you know, a specific, you know, visit on the road, anything like that? Like, that's how you start to think about, um, you know, certainly the types of plans you may need. And then, of course, if you already have specific physicians that you are tied to, you want to continue to see them, you, of course, want to ensure that they're actually taking um, that insurance plan that you are considering, um, where most folks are looking at that information when deciding on selecting a specific plan, you know, through catch. And we do enable them to, you know, search their doctor's names and whether they are actually, um, you know, um, a, a provider that's within that network. Great. Now, the next piece of picking that plan, just to make it a little more complicated, is, of course, looking at the various different metal tiers. Um, so plans are categorized by metal tiers, um, and that indicates the average amount of healthcare costs covered under each plan. So again, starting from bronze and working our way to platinum, you're looking at the lowest premium to the highest premium costs, right? And then that also, of course, coincides with the highest cost of care versus the lowest cost in care. So as we look at a bronze plan, you know, this may be 
be an individual, you know, and this is a good choice for them. If they're honestly, they're not going to the doctor, right? They really just want coverage in case, um, you know, something major is going to happen, sickness, illness, anything like that, that individual may select to choose, you know, to have that lower um, monthly premium um, and that higher cost at the end of the day. So again, kind of based on the individual's risk, um, as we look at, you know, silver and gold and platinum, it's the same. Um, again, it's just how much are you ultimately willing to pay upfront on a monthly basis, um, dependent on how much care you may need, or if something happens, you know, again, having that overall coverage. Am I right in assuming Jess, that when I'm talking about cost of care, mm -hmm. the, the biggest drivers of that being like deductible and co-pays? that. Yep, exactly. That's right. Um, so again, and, and we'll talk about that. I think that's on the next slide, Lexi, as we look at, um, thank you. Perfect. As we look at what individuals are actually paying, right. And, and what all of these various different terms mean, uh, we've been throwing out the word premium quite a bit. Um, I, I feel like probably most folks on the call know what we're referring to in regards to that monthly premium, but that is the cost that you are essentially paying to have access <laughs> to your health insurance. Right. So, so, um, you know, that could be $300 a month, $600 a month, you know, $100, whatever that amount may be. That is what you are paying each and every month to have access to use your health insurance. Um, you certainly uh, want to ensure that you're paying that month over month. You don't want to have a lapse in coverage where you're no longer, you know, insured. Um, so that is what that premium is. As we look at deductible, so that is the amount that you are paying for um, covered health uh, care services before your health plan starts actually, you know, sharing that costs. So as we look at, and we'll show an example of that plan, you know, an individual could have a deductible of $3,500, $5,000. A family could have a deductible of, you know, 8,500 or 10,000, whatever that amount may be. And that's the amount that you essentially need to pay before your health insurance carrier is going to start sharing some of that cost. So that is the deductible. Again, as you look at the tiers, right, typically that bronze is going to have the higher deductible versus the platinum who may have that lower deductible. As we look at coinsurance, um, which is on the screen here, that is the portion you pay for covered um, healthcare after you meet your deductible. So um, typically what you will see from the health insurance provider, they're paying around that 80% and you're responsible for 20%. Um, so again, that is the coinsurance piece that comes in after um, that deductible is meant. Copay, you may be familiar um, with this term. That's essentially that fixed amount that you are paying uh, for a specific service of visiting your doctor, right? Or, or um, you know, getting a prescription drug. So on your insurance card, you'll see that visiting your primary care doctor may be $30 and visiting a specialist could be 40 or $45. That is the amount that you're paying for that service. And then out-of-pocket max, that is the maximum amount that you could possibly spend on medical expenses each year. Um, for some plans, you may see that the deductible and out-of-pocket max could be one and the same, or the out-of-pocket max may be higher than your deductible. Um, so a lot of different terms there that we're, that we're throwing out, um, but hopefully um, it'll help once we show some examples too of what this looks like. This is, this is really useful. Um, on that same slide, Lexi, on the um, out-of-pocket max, mm -hmm. the way that interfaces with coinsurance, would it be true that, let's say I hit my deductible, uh, it's not the same as my out-of-pocket max. I have to pay something through coinsurance for coverage, but mm -hmm. if my coinsurance hits that out-of-pocket max, does coinsurance then stop? That's right. That's right. And then again, not all plans have coinsurance either, uh, you know, uh, tack to them. So uh, yeah, of course it, it does vary. Unfortunately, uh, we don't make it easy. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's useful to understand the deductible versus out-of-pocket max things, because when you're comparing plans, this is something I've really looked at very closely in the past, because to me, like out-of-pocket max is kind of like, what's the worst case scenario? Like, let's assume some catastrophe happens to me this year. Right. Where, what is the worst case of what I would pay because I'm coveraged and that out-of-pocket max is helpful, especially if you are someone who's healthy and you're thinking like, I might go lower in the bronze or silver metal, metal tier, you know, you're playing with a little bit of risk and this kind of quantifies that level of risk. That's right. Awesome. 
Great. So now as we dive in to talk a little bit more about what does this actually look like um, when uh, utilizing and using the catch product. So as we've been, um, you know, talking about over the last you know, 20 minutes or so, you have the opportunity to explore health plans with catch and then move forward and apply and enroll in those in that specific plan that you're interested in. So we first want to kind of talk about what does it look like to actually explore these plans that are available specifically um, in your location. So we have a very simple um, explore where you're just entering information specific to your zip code, your total household income, and who needs coverage. Um, so who needs coverage could just be you. You may have a spouse or you know dependents that you may be adding uh, to that as well. Once you enter that information, we're gonna be able to serve up how many plans are available within your specific region, and then what do the cost of those plans actually look like? So here you're seeing a few screenshots of what our public health explorer looks like. Um, again, you can just go um, to, and we'll show you the website, um, that you can just go to the landing page and enter this information and see what types of plans you may qualify for and what those tax subsidies may look like as well. At that point, you'll be able to look into any individual plan. So again, going through what we just discussed, you can start to filter by metal tiers. You can start to filter by plan types. Do you want to enter in specific, um, you know, uh, physicians that you, you know, are, are seeing to see what plans are covered there? And then you can start to look at the various different, you know, deductibles again and comparing that to the overall premium price and all the different things that we've been discussing. And under each plan, you'll be able to see, you know, certainly what's covered um, and, and what additional, you know, costs may come into play. Uh, so you can see that under each and every plan and start to compare those. And uh, once you find Find one that you're interested in moving forward with, you can then move through the process of actually applying and then enrolling into that plan. Great. Lexi, did you want to take this one? Oh, sure. Yeah, I think at this point, this is kind of um, just a wrap up of, of everything, right? So all of this stuff can be done through catch. Window shopping is started October 15th and it's going to be going right up until open enrollment. So as Jess said at the top, open enrollment starts November 1st. So that is when the marketplace will open and that's when you'll actually be able to enroll in a plan. So you right now you can take a look and play around and we'll actually, if you go through and you find a plan you like, we'll save the plan for you and our product. And then we'll let you know on November 1st that now it's time to come back in and enroll. Uh, but if you do log in starting November 1st, you'll be able to apply directly. Also this date here that Jess had mentioned, to get coverage that starts on January 1st, you'll need to still enroll by December 15th. So we have this kind of six week period where the marketplace is open and you'll be able to enroll for coverage that starts at the beginning of the new year. Question for you, Lexi, is there any, um, is there anything we need to know in terms of who is eligible for open enrollment? Sure. So in regards to who is eligible for open enrollment, um, the open enrollment period, any individual is eligible to enroll in, in health insurance during that time. So you do not need to have any qualifying life events like what you would need to have outside of open enrollment. That would be you know, getting married, moving states, having a child, uh, losing employment. Um, those would be qualifying life events that would need to happen for you to be eligible to enroll in a plan outside of open enrollment. But during open enrollment, um, anyone is eligible to go through the process of you know, shopping, applying and enrolling um, into, into a health plan. One other thing I did forget to mention um, in regards to the catch product, let's say some of you on this call already have a plan through the federal marketplace and you're interested in actually keeping that plan. Uh, you have no interest in, in, you know, selecting a different one or anything like that. You can actually re renew your plan through catch as well. So you have the ability to link that existing health plan through catch. Um, you, of course, can shop and, and look at, uh, you know, different plans as well. But if you decide that you want to stay with that plan, you can renew your plan directly through catch. Um, so there certainly is a benefit of doing that as well, because then you'll have all of your benefits in one place. Um, and you're, you know, of course, able to then go through the process of renewing that plan year over year, um, all, all within catch. We had a question here in the chat from 
uh, Brianna, does resignation, does leaving your job qualify as losing a job uh, in the life event outside of open and During the qualifying life event, yes, yeah, certainly. So um, in that case, right, so you as the individual um, then would need health insurance. Uh, so typically you have the option, you know, to um, go on to your COBRA insurance with your former employer or to seek insurance on your own, and you would be able to, um, yes. Uh, what if somebody is, you know, open enrollment is November through December 15th uh, mm -hmm. to get coverage for January 1st. If I'm sitting here and I'm uh, maybe I'm employed, but I'm thinking, you know, I want to go out on my own next year, maybe even as early as January. Do I need to wait until I'm no longer covered by an employer to do open enrollment? Yes. So at that point, if you were to go through open enrollment, you would have to state that you had coverage um, from your employer, uh, which then wouldn't allow you to be eligible. Um, so you would need to wait. Well, that's a lot of ground, guys. We covered a lot of acronyms and tiering and different things like that. Um, I'd love to go back uh, while we're doing questions here and feel free, everybody, to leave more questions in the chat or if you wanted to come on screen and share it, you can use the raise hand function under reactions at the bottom of the Zoom window. Um, but we'd love to take some more questions. Lexi, if we go back to the screenshots of what the catch product look like, looked like, uh, yeah, exactly. This is just so much nicer than <laughs> the healthcare marketplace site. Even just like, you know, the color coding we see here, you lay out, here's your deductible, here's your premium, here's the, uh, the metal tier and the type of plan. It's just so helpful when comparing across a bunch of plans, because if you haven't done this before and you're going in here and you're looking at a bunch of plans, you're probably going to look at a bunch of plans. You're going to see, okay, here's, you know, as many as a dozen that may seem like they fit me. How do I compare these? And I think the, the catch, um, uh, interface really is helpful in helping you make some quick comparisons and assessments. Certainly. And, and, and it's super helpful as well as you start to see the various different subsidies that you may qualify for and starting to kind of look at the differences there. Um, and of course, this is just the explorer portion. So as you get deeper into the flow of going through the application and enrolling, um, it's a very seamless experience and uh, yeah, very easy to get through. John asked a question in the reverse. If, if he's enrolled via a health exchange or open marketplace uh, plan and then accepts an employment position with an employer subsidized health coverage, yep. is that a qualifying event to stop the exchange coverage? Yeah. So the exchange coverage then would stop. Um, so you would no longer need that coverage. You would stop paying for that plan if you are now on your employer's plan. Exactly. Um, so you wouldn't be um, double insured, if you will. <laughs> And with the extension of the open enrollment period, mm -hmm. I'm assuming that if I were to enroll from January 1st through January 15th, my coverage would start February 1st. That's correct. Right. That's correct. And then any time outside of open enrollment, it's always the first of every month is when yeah, the coverage would start. We have a couple more questions I'll get to here uh, mm -hmm. in a second, but something else that came to mind on one of the first slides we talked about uh, nine out of 10 people were experiencing very low premiums mm -hmm. through uh, the exchange this year. What's, what is it about the 10th person out of 10 that may not put them in this bucket for lower monthly costs? That's a great question. Lexi, do you? Want to <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. I think that's just based on people that are still earning a high enough income that they're not falling within that bucket that would qualify for tax credits. So the assumption by the government then is that you're making enough to actually be able to afford the health insurance on your own and kind of don't need these tax subsidies to help make up that difference. But that's particularly high earners. Yeah. Yeah. So subsidies are mostly uh, granted and measured by your, and this is probably self-reported projected income, correct? That's right. 
That's right. Um, yeah. But again, you want to ensure that, you know, you're, you're certainly close because uh, you don't want to end up having to pay right at, at the end of the year, right. which again, the benefit of catch and, and what we certainly can help individuals with, especially if, been, if you've been using our product over time is we know what you've been earning. Uh, we know like what your projected like income is. So we are able to help you understand that when going through um, the application and enrollment process, because you may think that you're going to be earning. 55,000 and we're like actually it looks like you're more around 48,000 right or whatever that amount may be so um yes that is the difficult part certainly um when being able to yes project your total household income uh, as and this is important if you've never done this process before I've seen a lot of freelancers make this mistake where they go into the healthcare marketplace and they see that their subsidy is calculated by the projected income they place in there and they think that they're gaming the system by projecting it low to get a high subsidy. And then they realize after tax time that, oh, that's actually measured and tracked and uh, you know, accounted for. And if you do not match that projection, they will retroactively calculate what your subsidy should have been. And if they gave you more subsidy than it should have been, you are liable to pay that back, which is a nasty little surprise at the end of the year if you weren't planning for it. So it's definitely worth having a good estimate or overestimating even your income to get a little bit of a, a return. That's right. Andrea asked, is there a particularly high earner like quantification or range that you're aware of? Yeah. So as you look at overall subsidies, um, you know, typically as an individual, it's earning less than 60,000, um, a year as a family. Um, I think it's more around the hundred thousand or so, uh, Mark, we could definitely follow up, um, on that. But, um, again, it does uh, vary depending on state as well, uh, as you're, you know, entering that information. So, um, again, it's very transparent when going through, um, our health explorer, what you're looking at. Um, and as long as that estimated household income pulls through all the way through the application, that subsidy will be, um, or will not be granted depending if you qualify or not. Uh, we have some related questions here about the other benefits of catch outside of the health insurance side of things. Andrea asks, you mentioned other benefits of catch aside from health insurance. Could you expound on that subject some more, please? And yeah. Heather also asks, what is the advantage? Actually, we'll, we'll, we'll answer Andrea's question first, then we'll go to Heather. Great. Certainly. So as um, Lexi mentioned a little bit earlier on in, during the presentation, um, so additional benefits that CATCH offers. Um, so the number one uh, benefit that folks are generally tapping into is our tax withholding and tax payments product. Um, so again, that's enabling you as you know a 1099 earner to set aside taxes off of each and every paycheck that you are receiving automatically, and we will pay the IRS directly for you on a quarterly basis. So again, you know, folks are using that to ensure those funds are just being set aside for them, and they're not going to have any surprises at the end of the year where they're going to have a large tax bill that they need to pay. So the tax withholding and tax payments uh, feature within CATCH um, is, is number one. The next one is uh, retirement. So we enable individuals to um, tap into either a Roth or traditional IRA through our product. We offer three standard uh, portfolios just based off of risk. You can set aside what percent you want to set, uh, you know, towards your retirement account. And we'll move those funds uh, again off of each and every paycheck that you're receiving. Uh, again, you have full control over, you know, when funds are being set aside to your benefits. Um, but it's great practice just to get in, you know, to automatically just having it uh, set aside. And then we have a variety of different um, savings benefits too, as you look at emergency savings, health expenses, um, and so on and so forth that you can set aside for. That's so helpful. There's just so much benefit to the out of sight, out of mind when you know what your different like savings buckets and metrics should be, and just having a system that does it for you. I didn't realize that you guys actually ship that off then to the IRS quarterly too, because a lot of people forget about their quarterly taxes. Yeah. Is there guidance within the app to help you identify like what these percentage yeah. breakdowns or buckets should be? 
Yeah, great question. Um, certainly. So during our onboarding process, we ask a handful around eight to 10 different questions uh, about you as the individual to help serve up those specific recommendations. So um, with taxes, of course, that's all based off of your, you know, um, 1099, you know, income that you're bringing in for the year, you'll let us know what that looks like. Of course, if you're filing, you know, single, married, anything like that, have dependents, and then we will serve up that recommendation for you. Um, and then of course you can gross up, gross down, still dependent on you know what you would like to do but most folks are taking that recommendation setting aside those funds paying those quarterly taxes and again no end of year surprises um so yeah it's super seamless uh john asked does catch also handle state or local estimated taxes Great question. Uh, so as of today, uh, it's just federal uh, that we are handling. Uh, so state and um, you know local individuals are handling that on their own. Um, we had a good question from Heather. Uh, she wanted some more cl clarification around the advantage of catch over using the healthcare.gov marketplace. Are there additional costs to using the catch interface versus healthcare.gov? Yeah, so definitely no additional costs. Um, so both platforms are free to use to, um, you know, uh, enroll in health insurance. Um, the benefits here is certainly the one-stop shop approach that Catch has come, you know, together and offering a variety of different benefits on, you know, the financial service side and health insurance. So most individuals um, certainly may come in and get health insurance through Catch, and then they start to, you know, obviously set up their plan across taxes or retirement and everything in between. So the benefit there is certainly, um, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, is being able to have visibility into your overall income, right? And, and what you're setting aside for, we can help you better understand if you may qualify for subsidies, you know, at a certain point, if you do have any life changes, um, you'll be able to let catch know. And we can tell you, here are the three things that you need to do to update your profile across the board. And we'll help you do that automatically. So again, instead of having, um, you know, multiple things living across the board, um, you just have one, one app that you use um, to handle all of this for you. What's the model for these other benefits? Um, is there like a percentage we pay to access these different uh, types of withholdings? Sure. Yeah. Happy to walk through that. So um, as of today, it's uh, it's an a la carte model. So essentially, if you want us to automatically set aside all of your funds towards the different benefits that you have set up, um, you're paying a dollar a month for us to do that. If you want to manually uh, set those funds aside, then you're just going in and doing it on your own and we don't charge for that. Most folks are utilizing our automation because they don't want a to- A dollar a month? A dollar a month. So that's what they're doing. Um, oh as you, gosh. yeah, exactly. Uh, for tax payments, we also do charge a fee to make those quarterly tax payments. But again, that's just coming out of, you know, their tax withholding bucket. Um, so users are gladly handing that off, right, for, for us to do that. And that's $10 a quarter. Um, so that fee is just coming right out of the tax withholding. Um, and in regards to uh, retirement, uh, so we do charge a $2 per month um, if your account is under $4,800. So that's the floor. Um, but once you surpass that, um, then it's a half a percent a year that we're earning um, off of. So again, very minimal costs across the board. Um, for health insurance, we do not charge at all. You're just paying your monthly premium. Naya asked a little bit ago, and sorry, Naya, if I'm mispronouncing your name, she says she struggles with income verification um, for covered California since it differs throughout the year. She's wondering how is income verification handled with catch? Yeah, certainly. Um, great question. Um, and so, you know, I, I hear you uh, specifically with, you know, income being volatile right throughout the year um, and being able to um, verify that that amount um, as you're going through the, the health application. Um, you know, typically with catch, you're able to see, you know, your your total earnings, right? Like we have all of that data and information and individuals are plugging that information into their health application, um, knowing what they've earned and what they project to earn. Um, we, of course, do assist if individuals are 
having issues, you know, with that verification and they need to upload supporting documents. That's generally what happens where you may need to support, you know, additional, um, you know, invoices or previous tax uh, filing or anything like that. We do support, you know, certainly uploading those documents and helping individuals, um, you know, navigate through um, that portion. But unfortunately, that is just part of, you know, the, the government needing to verify, um, certainly with a distributing tax subsidies. So we still follow this exact same process and help, um, you know, our end user certainly um, with, um, you know, supplying those supporting documents and everything like that. Um, so hopefully that helps answer, um, you know, the question. Unfortunately, some folks just may run into that. And we do the best that we can, of course, to assist and make sure that like they get approval, everything is good to go um, and making that hopefully much easier than, you know, certainly healthcare.gov or the state marketplaces on that front. And I'll just add to that, Jess, um, just so you know, when you do need help, it's really easy to get it. You just chat in all of our customer support team, our licensed agents, and they can walk, they can hold your hand through the process of, of uploading the documents or income verification, and, and we're available for that. Mm -hmm. Meredith asked, how do you find out if you qualify for and take advantage of tax subsidies and health insurance? So as you're going through the process, how do you know what you're qualified for and how do you apply that? Yep. So again, going back to the health explorer where we showed a few of those screenshots. Um, so I know that freelancing school has their own dedicated landing page. You can literally just go to that page, enter, you know, your zip code, enter uh, your household income, enter uh, who needs coverage. So if it's just yourself and your age, you'll be able to see what potential subsidies you qualify for right then and there. So you will know if you qualify for, let's say, you know, uh, $90 off of a plan, $200 off a plan, whatever that may be, you are going to know right away um, prior to moving forward. Now, in regards to everything being completely finalized, right, and being able to apply those subsidies, that's going to be through the health application and enrollment process. So when you go through your health application, at that point, um, you are submitting information confirming your income, and that is being verified and validated um, to ensure that that is, of course, matching up to previous, you know, tax filing, anything like that. And at that point, you will then be approved. So your eligibility will be approved and your final um, subsidies will be approved at that point. And then when you enroll, so finalizing and selecting that plan, it'll automatically be applied um, at, at that point. Uh, so during the Explorer portion, you will see um, you know, potential savings, right? And it's the application piece of when everything is being uh, verified um, and then it'll automatically be um, applied to those plan, that plan. Lexi, could you go back to that slide that we were just on that had the benefits outside of health insurance? Oh, yep taxes and everything. Um, so for everyone here live and everyone who watches this later, I took a whole bunch of time uh, almost two years ago to put a profit first system in place for my business, which was really just because I wanted to like save enough money for taxes. That was like the biggest driver for why I did that. Um, and other things like retirement as well. And it was a pretty big lift, but it's been a game changer. And this seems like a much simpler version <laughs> of that. It's a little lighter weight. There are, there are some things that I made accounts for. So my question was, can I create other buckets here outside of the ones listed? Can I create like custom buckets? You can. Yeah. So we do have custom goals. Um, so you can create as many as you would like. Uh, you can tie specific, uh, you know, uh, deadlines that you want to hit that goal. Um, you can add icons, you can name it whatever you want. Uh, yes. Uh, you see folks creating all kinds of, of different goals. I have a college fund for my daughter, like set up that I'm putting funds towards. You'll see some folks have like back taxes, like they're setting aside for, you know, taxes from 2019 that they may own or they're setting aside, you know, for new equipment that they want to buy, whatever it may be. Um, yes, uh, you can put together any custom savings goal that you'd like. That's so helpful. And so when I choose, like on the right-hand side here with this screenshot from Stripe, when I choose how much I'm dedicating from each, like literally each dollar, you know, you could think about this if you're looking at this, every dollar, you can say, what percentage of that am I going to put towards different things? When Catch withholds that, that goes into a Catch account somewhere, that's right. Yes. So like a catch bank account. 
That's right. It's a catch bank account um, that you will have access to throughout the catch product. So you can deposit, withdraw as often as you want out of that account. Um, and that is where essentially the funds uh, will come out of your linked bank account and go into your catch account and distribute it across your various different benefits. And then you, of course, can withdraw those funds at any given point, um, you know, when they're available um, outside of retirement, your retirement account that is an investment account. So the process to pull those funds out, um, you know, would uh, be the same as if you were withdrawing, you know, from an IRA or 401k. And what's the speed like for uh, withdrawing specifically? If I want to pull out of that because I have something happen, um, how sure. quickly will that go from the catch account to my bank account? Yep. So typical ACH process. Um, again, every single bank is a little different, right? We see anywhere from one to three days um, on, on that front. Um, so yeah, typical uh, yeah. One to three business days. I had you guys come in to talk about health insurance, but this, all of this, um, great. savings, <laughs> you know, yeah. is so useful. Like I said, I took so much time and so much effort to create these buckets for myself for profit first. And I bank with chase chase charges per checking account. It's a pretty big pain. Uh, so if you're looking at this, this looks like a really great solution and way for you to ensure that you're saving enough for taxes, that you're saving towards your retirement, that you're saving towards any other goal that you want. Um, really, really impressed by this and think it's a, a great addition to the whole platform. Thank you. Uh, Brianna asks, can you use this account feature, even if you don't, uh, need health insurance benefits? Certainly, um, you know, you can still use catch if you're just interested in, in setting up certain, you know, savings goals, um, you know, generally folks are, you know, activating, you know, taxes or retirement or health insurance, but you can certainly still use catch, um, you know, across the board. And if anything ever changes, you can always add benefits too as, as you go. So um, yes, you can certainly still use the product. So great. Uh, I'll stop here just for a moment longer in case anybody has any last minute burning questions they want to put in the chat. But you can see here on the screen, this is the landing page that we have set up through Freelancing School with Catch. Um, I used the product before I was an affiliate of the product. Even if you just use the health insurance product, that's not going to cost you anything. So um, truly, truly, I'm recommending this because I think it's an incredible product and you will benefit from it in, in many, many ways. I'll be using it for my own open enrollment uh, uh, purposes this, uh, this month. So um, I'll let you guys know how my experience goes, but that is the landing page if you need it. Um, and if you do wanna use Catch and you use that, that link, you'll be supporting me and the community. So it's a win-win for everybody. All right, uh, Lexi, Jess, any last words for folks? Anything on your end, Lexi? No, no, we're, we're, we're just excited to be here and to support what you guys are doing. So thank you so much for having us. Yes, thank Amazing. you. A lot of fun. Amazing. Thanks for uh, walking us through all of this. Excited to use this recording um, throughout all the education I do here at Freelancing School. So thanks everybody who joined live. Hopefully you got all of your questions answered. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, I will have it live in the community. If you're not a part of the Freelancing School community yet, just go to community.freelancing.school. And you can join that for free. Uh, and I'll be talking to you guys soon. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Take Bye, care, everybody. Guys.